OK, so in this video, we're going to be looking at vector addition using scale diagrams, but this time we're going to be doing it in two dimensions instead of one. Um, so we're going to start by recapping a few things that we have met before. So there are three questions that I'd like you to grab a scrap piece of paper and have a go at them. Um, so first thing I want to ask you is what is a vector? And I've given you some clues as to the kind of things we, we would need to contain. Um, in the last video, we looked at the three steps used for vector addition. So if you haven't watched that and you don't know what those are, I'd recommend you have a look at that first. And then finally, what are some vectors that we might add in this way? So pause the video now, have a go at these questions, and then we'll see how we're doing um, before we get started on two-dimensional work. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, what is a vector? It's a quantity that uh, requires two numbers to describe it. To describe it, and those two numbers are the magnitude and the direction. There, um, we, I guess, strictly speaking, this direction might not necessarily be a number, but it often is. So uh, let's leave it as that. So what are the three steps of vector addition? And we've got the cue that we came up with in our last video over here. So the first thing we have to make sure is we add the uh, vectors uh, tip to tail. And we can do that in any order we like. That doesn't matter. Uh, we choose a scale to represent the vectors on the diagram. And then we're going to draw a resultant from the start to the end and we can then i guess the kind of the final step we can then measure the resultant to determine its uh, magnitude and direction so we can do that actually from our diagram so that's why we're doing a scale diagram we can then measure the size of the resultant to allow us then to find out how big it is. Okay, so final question, what are some vectors you might add in this way? So we've met quite a few vectors so far. We have met uh, displacement, we have met velocity, we have met force. Uh, we haven't discussed it yet in this video series, but we're gonna meet acceleration, we're going to meet momentum, we're gonna meet moments of forces as well. Uh, so there are lots of vector quantities we're going to come across or have already, um, but uh, those are the ones that we've met so far. The, these are the ones we've actually met so far in this video series. So let's get started with um, adding 2D vectors. So first off, some good news. I don't have to tell you any additional rules that we haven't already met. Um, we're just going to um, be, end up with diagrams that look a little bit different. So, um, the only additional thing we need this time, so in the last one, we'd have needed a ruler so we can measure a length and draw the arrows. This time we're going to need a protractor as well um, in order to draw these um, in order to draw these arrows in the correct direction. So let's jump straight into an example and see this in action. So we've got an object is moved 10 meters at 30 degrees clockwise uh, of north and then five meters at 60 degrees clockwise of north so we're still going to follow the same rules so we still need our vectors tip to tail we're going to need to choose a scale to represent them and then we're going to draw a resultant from start to finish so we're going to do exactly the same thing so the scale i've chosen is i'm going to use one centimeter on my diagram to represent one meter in reality here so that's why this first vector is 10 centimeters, because we're representing 10 meters. And you can see I've used a protractor so I can draw it at 30 degrees to the vertical. Now, this is the nice thing about one, though. Actually, the ruler will tell me what angle I'm drawing at. Uh, you're almost certainly going to need a protractor if you're doing this on paper to do this properly. Uh, if you're wondering why it says 60 degrees, this ruler measures from the horizontal. So 60 degrees from the horizontal is 30 degrees from the vertical. So that's our first vector. We're then doing five meters at 60 degrees. So on my ruler, that's going to be 30 degrees because it measures to the horizontal. And I've drawn a line that is five centimeters long. So all that's left to do here is draw on our resultant, which I typically do in green. So let's uh, stick with that tradition there. 
So here is our resultant displacement in here. So uh, to find out how big it is, I need to measure the length of this vector, and then I can use that to work out what it actually was. So you can see this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11.4 is the length of that. So uh, the resultant displacement, if you like, is 11.4 centimeters. Um, I shouldn't say equal to because I'm representing it using a scale diagram. So the um, that means the sum of these displacements is going to be um, actually 11.4 meters. Uh, and we can see uh, this is where we're going to need a protractor. So we're going to get its angle. So you can see this is at 50 degrees. So at uh, 40 degrees to the north direction. Again, because remember, my mirror is measuring to like this horizontal direction there. So remember, because displacement is a vector, we need to give both its magnitude which is what we've given here, and we'd need to give its direction as well. So we need both of those things, and we can get both of those things from this scale diagram, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's show you a slightly different example where we've got vectors going in different uh, or opposite directions here. So in this one, we've got a force 50 newtons to the right at 30 degrees below the horizontal, and we've got 100 newtons left at 60 degrees above the horizontal. So um, what scale am I going to use? I'm going to use one centimeter is ten, representing 10 newtons. And I'm going to draw the biggest vector first because that's the one that takes up the most space. So I decided to draw the 100 newton one first of all. Um, so you can see here, um, we need it to be at 60 degrees above the horizontal. So you can see my line here, this angle in here is 60 degrees. And I drew a line which is 10 centimeters long. Uh, let's just double check that it actually is. Yeah, pretty much. And then we've got one drawn at five centimeters at 30 degrees below the horizontal. So you can see with my ruler, it's 30 degrees below the horizontal. You'll be doing that with a protractor, I imagine, there. Okay, so final thing to do is draw on our resultant. So resultant goes from the start to the end. So it's going to look like that. So we've got our resultant displacement there. And we can take some measurements from it. So that is two, four, six, eight point. Uh, again, I shouldn't be using equal to uh, 8.4 centimeters. And which means, I don't know why I said it was a resultant displacement. It's clearly a resultant force. So that means the resultant force, if one centimeter is 10 newtons, 8.4 centimeters is going to be 84 newtons. And what angle is this? So you can see that it says 86. Uh, so to the left at uh, 86 degrees above the horizontal. I could have said um, four degrees to the left of the vertical. That would also be fine as well. As long as it gives, we've got a clear magnitude and direction, um, it doesn't exactly matter how we give that unless you've received specific instructions too. Okay, so those are a couple of 2D vector additions. So what you're going to do now is you're going to have a go at this um, by yourself and then we will review it. So this is where your scrap piece of paper come in handy. You will need a ruler and a protractor to enable you to do this. So we've got a boat with velocity of five meters per second north relative to the sea, but the sea also has velocity of two meters per second at 30 degrees clockwise from north. What is the velocity of the boat? So pause the video and have a crack at drawing your own scale diagram, and then we'll see what we should have. Okay, so let's um, go through this and see what we should find. So um, I am going to be drawing the five meter second one first because it's the longest one, and that's the one that's going to determine the scale. So I'm going to say 
One centimetre on my diagram corresponds to one metre per second of velocity. So let's draw that. So it says straight north, so that one's actually nice and easy. So we just need to do five, don't we? Okay, let's start higher up the page. One, two, three, four, five. And then we need to do two at 30 degrees clockwise from north, but that's going to be 60 degrees from the uh, east direction, if you like. So let's do that. Uh, so we're going to do, oh, really is a bit too close. So we're going to have two centimeters. So then we've got our scale diagram. Let's now draw on our resultant, which remember goes from start to the end. That looks pretty good. Uh, frustrating that that hasn't come out in green. Oh, well, that doesn't uh, matter awfully. Um, okay, so we now need to grab our ruler so we can actually take a measurement. So we're working out what the vol final velocity is. So we've got two, four, six, seven centimeters, which means the velocity is uh, seven meters per second. And you can see that angle is going to be 10, 10 degrees clockwise from north. So you can see the vector, and we've got the two key things we need for a vector. We've got our uh, magnitude and we've got our direction there. Okay, so that finishes off this video looking at two-dimensional uh, vector addition using scale diagrams. I could have done another video looking at three-dimensional, uh, but it's much harder to draw diagrams to actually show that in action. But it would actually use exactly the same rules we're using here, but with three dimensions instead of two. Um, so that wouldn't change very much. Instead, what we're going to look at in the next video is how we can do this exact process we've just done, but we can do it without drawing these diagrams, and we can do it using um, trigonometry and also using Pythagoras theorem as well. So that's what we're going to look at in the next video.